On today's show, we're going to be talking about infrared photography, a very basic look at it, some of the do's and don'ts, and to see what you can do with a file once you get into Photoshop or Lightroom. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph, all about photography and video and live streaming and all kinds of things related. Today, we are talking about infrared photography. I have here a very, very old camera. This is a Canon 10D. It's like, uh, I think, six megapixels or something. This thing is tiny. Uh, it very, I don't even know what year this thing came out. But this is this camera came to me courtesy of Frederick Van Johnson. Many of you know him, the star of the TWIP podcast. He and I shot with this camera ooh, over a decade ago. And one of the photos that you're going to see in the show today came from that shoot all that time ago. And he uh, was cleaning out his closet, decided that it was time to pass it along to somebody else. And I asked if I could get my hands on it for the show, do a little show about it, and then it's going to go to another home after this. And I actually am probably going to get one of my cameras converted because this is just too cool. It's too much fun. So let's talk about what it is, what goes into this process. Um, there's two different types of infrared photography. You can do it with a filter. So you're just getting a glass filter that goes over the camera lens, your regular sensor, you take your picture. But apparently, and I've never done this, but apparently you have to have really long exposures. You can't do essentially normal photography with an infrared filter. It just it doesn't work. So the more expensive but better way to do it is to have your camera converted. And this is this is a one-way path. This is not, <laughs> you don't come back from this. But essentially what they do, you send this off to a service. There's many of them out there. I'm going to show you the website of one that uh, I haven't used, but I know other people who have and seems to be very popular. Um, essentially what they do is they remove one of the filters that's over the sensor already and replace it with one of their own. And that's pretty much it, except it obviously happens in a clean room. It's, you know, you can't have any dust and all that good stuff. If you imagine that in the world around us today, there are all spectrums of light. We can only see the visible spectrum, what's visible to us. We don't see infrared or any other um, of the other ma many wavelengths that are out there. So there is a filter over your sensor on every camera that filters out those wavelengths of light that we do not want the camera to see. And so what the conversion process is, is it removes that filter and replaces it with a different one that filters to the frequency, to the wavelength that we do want to see for this specific purpose. And it's really kind of cool. So here, let me, let me pull up the, uh, the website from this company called LifePixel. So the website is LifePixel, lifepixel.com. If you uh, want to help me out a little affiliate love, you go to photojoseph.com slash lifepixel. Appreciate that if you decide to do the conversion. But effectively, what they do, as I said, is they remove the filter that is on the sensor and replace it with their own. And you can have it converted a variety of different ways. So this is just a little grid they have showing different uh, conversions and then different effects. But here's a normal camera at the top. And then you've got the deep black and white infrared, the standard infrared, enhanced infrared, super color, uh, super blue, and full spectrum IR. So a variety of different infrared filters. And then it shows you some of the things here that I found very interesting. And I'm going to show you part of this today. This is right here. There's this thing because it says straight from camera. And it says auto white balance, which is not recommended. And until I knew what to do, this is what all my pictures look like. They all had this really hard red to them. It turns out, this is so interesting, when you're white balancing for infrared, you don't use a white neutral source as a white balance. You use green, right? So you point it at the grass or at some trees. And to get the best effect, you want to white balance it like you would normally under the lighting that you are going to be shooting it in, right? So if you're shooting a sunny field, then you want to shoot white balance off of a green a uh, patch of grass or trees or whatever that's in the sun. If you're doing it in the shade, do it in the shade, so on and so on. And that's going to give you the most accurate result. Now, because you're shooting raw, you're going to shoot raw. Because you're shooting raw, you can adjust the white balance in post just like you always can. But as always, it's nice to get it right in camera. And it's interesting to see the result difference, just what you see on the back of the camera when you do it right versus don't do it right. And you can see that right here. So we're just going to focus on this one here. This is standard IR, the standard infrared. So here's straight from the camera, auto white balance. So that's the one on the right. So we're looking at, let me zoom into that pure red right there. Scroll over to the left here, and this is the same photo done with e the correct white balance by simply white balancing off of green. And then from there, you can do any number of things to it. One of the most common things is to convert to black and white. And when you convert to black and white, you can do all kinds of fun things with it that really go beyond what you can normally do with a black and white photo. But some of your colors are different, right? Your foliage, as you see in this example here, turns bright white. It's almost like it has snow. Um, your clouds get, or your um, sky gets super, super dark. It's really quite beautiful and stunning. Uh, clearly not a natural look, but it's really fun to do. 
And then there's this thing, we're going to look at this too in Photoshop, where you do this red-blue channel swap and you end up getting a blue sky. So you're kind of, your blue sky returns, sort of. You'll see it's, it's definitely a bit different. But you can do a red-blue channel swap and, and get some of that back. So it's, it's really cool. There's so many different things that you can do with it. So let's take a look at, uh, Add some pictures in Lightroom, and, and then we're going to take one into Photoshop and see what the effects are and see what you get out of it. So let me switch over to Lightroom here and zoom out of this. So we'll start here with some pictures that I shot with the auto white balance. This is before I figured out the whole um, white balance off of green thing. And you, this is what they turn out like, right? So bright, bright red, clearly something's wrong with it. If we, however, go over to a photo that was shot with the proper white balance, let me see, it was a little bit later in the day. So here's me doing a white balance off of the green grass. And then there is a picture with just the, uh, this is totally straight out of camera, um, raw file with the right white balance. You see, it, it almost goes black and white, which I think is super interesting that the correct white balance takes it to an almost black and white photo. Isn't that weird? Now, what, I'll, I'll do this manually now. So we're going to go in and I'll go back to that first picture of the flower. Uh, I think it was that, that one there. And let's go into the white balance effects. So here we are. We see color. We see this is currently set as shot. Um, actually, what happens if I go auto? I don't even know. If I do auto, huh, it goes purple. Interesting. I'm um, going to go back to as shot. And here's what I'm going to do. This is effectively what's going to happen if you do a white balancing camera. The temperature will be taken all the way down to 2,000 degrees Kelvin. And then the tint will get adjusted accordingly. And it's going to be somewhere around here-ish. And for this shot, you know, I'd, you know, minus 61, minus 56, whatever, somewhere around there, that's going to give us that more neutral look. So if you had correctly white balanced in camera, by sampling something green, this is what you get. Now, just to make this even more interesting, let's do a, a quick little reset on here. Uh, reset, there we go. I'm going to do an auto white balance on what is green. So this is a sunflower, obviously. This is green stuff behind it. And check that out. So it does it, right? I, I just, I find this fascinating. I find it fascinating that we click on something that we know is green, clearly isn't green in the shot here. That is what we want to white balance off of because that's what we're told is going to work and clearly does. And we click on it and it works. It's just, it's neat to see the whole things come together and to actually function like that. So at this point, now in Lightroom, I can't do a channel swap. I can't do a red blue swap. So I'm going to have to take it into Photoshop or Affinity Photo, something like that, if I want to do that. It wouldn't matter much for this picture because it doesn't have a sky. So I'm just going to play a little bit with a shot here. And then we're going to take another shot into Photoshop and see what we can do there. So something like this. You know, I might want to go full black and white, so I can just go to black and white. And then as you play with the black and white mixer, you can see what color effects in here are going to have, uh, have effect on the image. So, you know, like my orange, because I've got all the yellow in the scene, perhaps I want to bring that up a little bit. Um, the yellow, it's, well, I, I shouldn't say that about the orange being close to yellow, because the yellow doesn't really seem to have much of an effect on there at all. It's interesting to see which sliders have an effect and which ones don't in here. In this case, hardly any of these do. But as we get closer to the bottom here, we're going to start to see a little bit more effect coming into play. Um, very, very subtle. Why is this being so subtle? It wasn't this subtle when I was playing with it the other day. Well, maybe it was a different photo. Interesting. Maybe the red has just overpowered it. I'm not really sure. Oh, there we go. There we're getting some big differences in there. So you can start to get some interesting effects. Um, we can go in and do something like, let's add a little bit of clarity to this. Maybe a little vignetting on here is going to look pretty sweet. And you know, there's that, that backup thumbnail photo that I had. So kind of cool, right? That's kind of cool to play with. I, I love the brightness of the the flower here, how it's just so much popping on there. Yeah, kind of fun. Um, here I did this picture just of my kid, just a little plain blown dandelions. Really neat what it does with skin tones. This is, again, super low resolution file, so we're zoomed in at like four to one right now. Uh, but really, really pretty what it does on the skin. It super, super smooths it out. And I'm going to show you something at the end here of what else it does to skin that was really, really surprising the first time I played with it. So you got stuff like that. Um, and if I actually, if we go back to the original on this, one thing that you're going to see Let's go back. Let's just show original on here how dark the eyes were, right? So I actually in, went in here and I added um, added little radial filters over the eyes to brighten them up a little bit. It's kind of kind of funky and interesting. So let's let's do something a bit different. Let me go into Photoshop and open up. Uh, here it is. Open up a file that actually has some sky in it. And so we're going to do in here the red and blue channel swap so you can see what effect that has. Before I do that, though, I would love to remind you of how we operate on this show. We operate on what I like to call a value for value proposition. If you feel like you have gained value from today's show, that I would most certainly appreciate you considering putting a little bit of value back in. Lots of different ways you can do that. If you go to photojoseph.com support, you'll see all the different ways. For today's show in particular, if you do decide to 
convert one of your infrared, uh, one of your cameras over to infrared, then I would appreciate using my affiliate link, which is down below, or just go to photojoseph.com slash life pixel, and that will take you to the affiliate page for for me. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. So let's go back into this. Now we're looking at this file in uh, Camera Raw. I'm, I'm not going to do any white balance adjustment to it. Um, just leave it as shot. Actually, no, I'm, I lied. I'm going to take it down. I'm going to kind of correct it. So let's go ahead and get it down to where it probably would have been had I white balanced this properly. And you can see the sky is poking through there and it's looking very, very different. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. And now I'm going to go through the channel swap thing, which I forget now. Channel mixer. There we go. It's um, image adjustments, channel mixer. That's what I want. So image adjustments, channel mixer. There it is. And effectively, what the channel mixer does is it allows you to, to replace one channel with another in a sense. So you see here we've got. The output channel is red. We're looking at the red channel, and red is at 100%, and green and blue are at zero. That's our default. Green is going to be green at 100%, the others at zero, and blue is, of course, going to be blue at 100%, and the others zero. What the channel mixer allows me to do is say, you know what, I want the blue channel to be made up of not so much blue, and let's add a little bit of green into it. So you're taking data from the green channel. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to take blue to zero and, one, and red up to 100. So we've now converted the blue to red. And I'm going to do the opposite on red. I'm going to take that to zero and take the blue to 100. And this is the blue red channel swap. And there you can see the effect. We have gotten some blue sky back into it. So it's a very common thing to do when doing, um, when doing infrared photography if you want to keep it in color. Very common to do that red blue channel swap. And then, especially if you've got a scene that's got a lot of sky in it. Obviously, didn't here, but then you get that big blue sky in there. Um, incidentally, if you want to play with files, if you go to that LifePixel website, they will, on that comparison page that I showed you, they have uh, downloads. You can download each one of those raw files from the different types of conversions and play with it yourself, which is great. It'll give you a chance to kind of get your hands dirty with it. So, white balance off of green. Super bizarre, but that's, that's the way it works. That's what you want to do. Uh, you can correct the white balance in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever, as you saw. Just set it to 2000, the lowest possible setting, and then adjust the tint, and that's going to get you there. And, um, and then you get the red channel swap, uh, the red blue channel swap, which is a really common thing to do. So normally you see infrared photography of landscapes. That's the most common. You look it up on, you Google it, that's the vast majority of what you're going to see. And you saw I had a picture of my kid on there, and the skin just gets a super, okay, the kid's three, so clearly the skin's already probably porcelain. But what I discovered with Frederick all those years ago was we were goofing around in his house, and we had some friends over, and we broke out the studio lights, and we eventually pulled out this camera, and we started doing some photography in infrared under studio strobes, which was one of those things you're going, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. I mean, at the time, it was the first time I'd ever shot with an infrared camera, so I had no idea what's going to happen. Let's just see what we can do with it. And it's remarkable what happened. So let's, let's just switch over and take a look. I found this to be so fascinating. So the picture is, yes, slightly gratuitous and slightly, uh, slightly clickbaity, but it's the real picture. This is the photo that we took on that day, one of many. And look at her chest. Okay, sorry. But look at her chest. Look at the veins coming through. Because the veins are closer to the surface there, we are really picking up the darkness of that. And it's really coming through in such an incredible way. Let me get the white balance it's right about there-ish. You can see how her dark hair has become almost blue colored. And if I then go in and let's just uh, maybe enhance, add a little bit of clarity in there to really crank up the mid-tone contrast, you can see what's happening in there. It is so cool looking. It's very vampiric almost, like a vampire. I just, I love it. So you've got this porcelain skin with the veins coming through. If you have your arms or whatever, where they're near the surface, they show through like that. And I have loved this series of photos since then because that is just so unique and cool and different. So if you have one of these cameras, one of these converted cameras, and you are just always out shooting out in nature because that's why you got the thing, because it looks really cool when you're shooting in nature, take it into the studio. Photograph a human with it, uh, with studio lights, and see what you get. It's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be different. I think it's kind of fun. If you've ever done this before, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys are doing for those of you who have infrared cameras, what unique and clever things you're doing with it. Stick it down in the comments. If you put a link to a Flickr gallery or something, it'll get blocked when you first paste it in. Um, we'll see it eventually and release it. So go ahead and paste away with the links. Don't worry about it. And, uh, and we'll get them up there. I'd love to see what you guys are doing with these types of cameras. So 
That's it for today's show. Thanks again for tuning in. Once again, if you do decide to have your camera converted, please head over to photojoseph.com slash lifepixel. That's life with an F, not live, L-I-F-E-P-I-X-E-L. And that will be the affiliate page to get your, uh, get your camera converted. I would most certainly appreciate it. I am planning to do one of my cameras. I've actually sent them an email. They haven't responded yet asking if they have advice because fortunately I have quite a few cameras um, and I'm going to send in one of my Lumix cameras to get done. Now, one of the really cool things about doing a mirrorless camera is you are going to see in real time on the sensor through the viewfinder what you're going to get, right? With a mirrored camera like this, you don't know what it looks like until you take the picture. With a mirrorless camera, I can adjust white balance, exposure, obviously everything else and see that effect in real time. Even shoot in black and white with the infrared sensor and see that look through the camera in real time. That is super, that alone is just making me go, yeah, I, I got it, I got to do this. Um, I think it's about 275, I think, for conversion. So not crazy expensive, um, you know, but again, it's a one-way street. So you're not going to want to send your favorite camera out there, send, uh, send off an older body. So I'm probably going to send a GX8. It's got 20 megapixel sensor, a nice big fat sensor on there and, uh, and see what happens with that. And obviously, when I get that done, I will bring it on the show and show you guys how it worked, turned out. All right, thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll see you. Oh, no, we're going to do Q&A. Are we doing Q&A? Let's do a Q&A. All right, guys, we'll see you right back here for the Q&A.